When did the story first come to you and where did it come to you from? You know, actually it came in 2018 on Facebook. Secondary cast, all our villages. I have seen films uh, uh, from Chiranjeevi and all that stuff. I haven't, I haven't seen Tarkovsky's films to get into filmmaking. I'm at Berlinala and today I've got Jatla Siddharth, the filmmaker behind In the Belly of a Tiger, just a poster is right here. Hi Jatla. Hi. How are you? I'm doing good. How are you feeling? <sighs> Quite excited, yes. So this is your second feature film. Yes. And your first feature film premiered at the Busan Film Festival. And your second feature film is premiered at the International Berlin Film Festival. You're only premiering at big film festivals or what? <laughs> no, I've been lucky maybe and you know, a lot of uh, back work, ground work also happening there. So yeah, that's the reason. How many screenings have you had at Berlinala now? I've had two screenings for now. Okay. And the response has been amazing. And uh, you know, it's so cold outside. I'm sure you yes. know this. And uh, you know, when you know, when you are, you know, filling the other people's hearts with a lot of warmth, you know, I think the kind of warm response we are getting, it's it's really good, yes. Alright, so before we get to the response of the film, I know Abhi, the release is a long time away, people are not going to get to watch it for a really, really long time, but what can you tell the viewers about In the Belly of a Tiger? Uh, In the Belly of a Tiger is a story about an elderly couple who have to decide on one single night who among them will go into the forest to get killed by the tiger so that uh, their family can claim government compensation to survive. But what transcends into uh, onto that night and how what kind of uh, decisions they take and uh, how it uh, you know transforms that night into a very beautiful surreal magic realism is the story all about. Most of your primary characters in the film work at a brick factory, which is you know one of the most exploitative industry there is because they pay next to nothing. It's a form of modern day safe slavery. Um, when you're telling a story like that about people who are disenfranchised. Uh, do you find a fear of going becoming exploitative yourself when you take those stories and make a feature film? See, I feel filmmakers uh, shouldn't, m m you know, kind of, you know, we we just observe things and we actually uh, try to show what's happening around so that you know this kind of uh, questioning should happen within the audience and for, to the society. Yeah. But then to society should take the decisions of you know what kind of exploitative form. I shouldn't make a statement. I just have to report it. And now it's up to you guys after seeing the film, what you guys think of it. When did the story first come to you and where did it come to you from? You know, actually it came in 2018 on Facebook. You know, on Facebook I saw an article where I saw that, you know, uh, some people from a village are sending their elderly ones into the forest uh, for a government compensation. I was shocked mm. and I was like, you know, can this really happen? So, you know, that's how, you know, I marked the village and then went to that village, stayed there for a month, tried to figure out really is it the real truth. And, you know, to, to my surprise, you know, I couldn't find tiger as a major problem, but I found education, I found alcoholism a big problem, I found poverty a major problem. Tiger, that which is why you, when you see the film, tiger is just a metaphor and, you know, yeah. I've been addressing to the other problems. Uh, uh, very much more in the film, yeah. Yeah, you don't really get to see the tiger in the belly of yes, a tiger. Yes. It's more about the people all around. Um, the film, ha you know, is very empathetic towards its characters. Of course, you're looking at people struggling with alcoholism. You're looking at people struggling with real dire poverty and uh, other systems of oppression. Uh, in the writing, were you sure that you wanted to build as empathetic a uh, view towards the character as you could? I, you know, see, as a filmmaker and as an artist, you know, if we call it as, uh, you start observing things, but you see in history also, you know, artists really tend to get moved a bit. And, you know, uh, when I was seeing all these uh, situations happening in the village, I was pretty shocked. Mm. And, you know, and to be an observer is actually, Suchitra, one of the most toughest things to do. Because, you know, I have seen some really... Uh, heartbreaking moments. I have seen some great moments of happiness and which also are there in the film. So, you know, it was a very tough uh, decision uh, sometimes, you know, that is why if you see the film, Sahar's character, the son's character is actually me. Uh, mm. If you notice, even Sahar keeps observing things until he breaks down uh, in the in the second half or second act of the film, so it, for my breakdown was like you know I finally put it on script. You know when I saw all these things for six months, I put it on the script and through those dialogues I tried to tell my view. 
on the whole thing. What was the casting process like? Are these all actors or are some of them non-actors as well in your film? So basically, uh, I stayed there for a year and a half. So I got some great friendships happening there. So most of the, uh, you know, uh, secondary cast are all villages around. Non-actors. You know, non-actors. The son is a trained actor in the right. Rotak uh, Film Institute. He's a pastor from Rotak Film Institute. But the elderly couple are theater artists from okay. Chhattisgarh. Hmm. So th- I brought them. Uh, I auditioned them, and uh, you know, I felt they were perfect to the role. And you know, since you know, theater actors are a little loud. So you know, it, it, I had to take six months workshop to, with them so that you know, I can actually you know, nicely smoothly navigate them to the cinematic experience. But you know, I must tell you this, that when I was um, watching that... (laughs) That's all right. When I was watching that climactic sequence, and uh, I'm not going to reveal anything about the sequence, but the husband and wife dialogue is happening. And there's a heightened sense of the way they deliver the dialogue. It's very theatrical, the way they deliver the dialogue. And I questioned, does it work or does it not work? But then there's also so much theatre in the film as a release, as the only form of release that the villagers have from their real life is to watch these stories of gods and goddesses performed by local theatre artists. It kind of works in that way that they watch theatre and is their life also now theatrical? Like there's a question, is that a genuine uh, like effort that you made to keep it a little bit theatrical, that climactic sequence? See, I think uh, um, I come from uh, South India, you know. I've, I've seen films uh, uh, from Chiranjeevi and all that stuff. I haven't, I haven't seen Tarkovsky's films to get into filmmaking. No. And, you know, from my culture, it's more about expression. Yeah. And I feel, you know, the dialogues have to be expressive because that is their final night, yeah. They won't sit silent and uh, look at like an artistic film, right? Yeah. The real They're moment, really letting it out. Yeah, they will let it out. That, that guy is going to die. So, you yeah. know, if you in your life, uh, if, you're, if you are in a such a situation, you will tell your best lines to the person possible, right? So if you put it, put yourself in their mind space, you will obviously be very expressive. Now I want to talk to you about the flowers in the film. There's yeah. a beautiful flower motif. There's a lotus that appears over and over again. But like as we can see in the poster right here, there's also different kinds of flowers, different prajatis of flowers that don't really belong together, but they bloom at all sort of odd moments through the film. So why so many flowers in the belly of a tiger? Like you have seen, um, magic realism is the thing which I touched upon. And yeah. you know, lotus is one of the most famous flowers, you know, because it is a national uh, flower. It, it's a national flower. It is also connected to our Hinduism. Buddhism, it's the flower of God, it's it's also about Vishnu, what we talk about. And then I, I understand what you're talking about, the petals which you see, they don't come along. But yeah. you know, when, when we are talking about magic realism and you know, these petals which we, uh, I, I don't want to tell much about it, but at specific moments you see these petals coming up uh, at certain places. So you know, if you notice the film, I have used all these forms of, you know, experiments so that you know, it makes sense at the end, you know, yeah. which is why the mismatch of these flowers and all are there. But you know, people will uh, relate It's to beautiful. It. Yes. I love it. Magic realism seems to be a motif in all the other films that have come from India this year. Ram Reddy's Fable and uh, Vinod Raj's um, Katakali. Both the films have some sort of divine in it. Have you seen any of those films? I'm going to see tonight uh, Kottakali. Uh, yeah. I'm very excited to see uh, the film. I'm, I have become very good friends with uh, him actually. Vinod Raj. Yeah, with Vinod Raj. So I'm pretty excited to see it. And I've been also told by the Berlin programmers also that, you know, especially Kottakali and me, uh, my film have some similarities. Motives, some motives are yes. similar. Yes, yes, yes. The yes. rooster one specifically. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. please watch Fable also. Like you love that also. Okay. And I, it I, also I has magic realism and divinity I shall, I it. shall. I, I think uh, we, I'm here till the uh, festival end, so I will catch it up. Definitely catch yes. it. Now, talk to me about bringing your film to Berlin. What is that process like for a young filmmaker who's only, this is your second film, is uh, Berlin and other international film festivals, are they welcoming, are they supportive of your journey? So, I think it's a, uh, I have to tell you about my first film. Uh, when I passed out from uh, FTI, um, you know, after two, three years, I got bored of what I was doing. So then I thought, okay, why don't I make a film? So I took a small 5D camera, like some of what you are holding right now. Yeah. And, you know, I just shot a film in 10 days. Love and Shukla. Love and Shukla. And it premiered at Berlin. It went to 40 festivals. Premiered at Busan. Yeah. 
It yeah. premiered at Busan, then I traveled to some 25 countries. But you know, when I traveled to these 25 countries, I realized that I always used to get audience award, but never never the main award. Achha. And I was like, why? Huh. You know, then I figured out that, you know, those uh, uh, films which were getting the main awards, these people went to script labs. Till then, I honestly didn't know what a script lab was because <laughs> I just wrote it and just made the film. Right. So then when the script labs concept and all, I understood. And there is a certain way if you want to get into the top uh, festivals like, you know, Berlin Cannes, Venice, Sundance and all that, you need a certain route. It requires a lot of patience uh, because, you know, I spent script lab, you know, first I finished in the NFDC script lab, then it went to Les Mall, mm. which is a European script lab for six months because you also need to know the Euro European perspective, right? Which was missing in my first film. Right. Then I went to script pool talent, then you then enter into co-production markets. Uh, I was into part of uh, NFDC, then I went to HAF Hong Kong Asia Film Financing Forum, which is one of the Asia's biggest film financing forum. Then you know you get on, on board all these producers, you also need to check out the treaties of each country. Countries with each other, yeah. 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 It's a long process, yeah. I admit it's a long process, but it's worthwhile. See, I'm here in Berlin yeah. now. But uh, having said that, uh, a filmmaker should always be honest. And you know, it's not like, you know, uh, only if he does a script lab, he will get into the film because, yeah. you know, Vinod Raj, you know, classic example of Vinod Raj, yeah. he made a film uh, and, you know, he, if his first film went into Pebbles. Rotterdam, Pe Pebbles and it went to Rotterdam and won the Tiger Award. Yeah. And um, he didn't do any script lab, right? But, you know, ma majorly, I mean, there are exceptions always, but, you know, if you, if an Indian, especially an Indian film wants to be into these top festivals, I recommend these, uh, this process as mandatory because there are a lot of things to be taking into consideration. So what I understood is if only if you make a good film doesn't matter. Yeah. It's only at 25 percent. Yeah. Then who is your producers? Yeah. Who, what is your? Uh, who are your technicians? What is the international collaboration you brought along? Yeah. Those things really matter for these uh, festivals. Yeah. Well, whatever it is that you've done has worked so far and it's brought your film so far. Thank you so much for sharing your film with us and for talking to me today about it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tatla. Bye. Bye.